Well, I'll tell you one thing for you, look. Not a bad worker. Do me best. If ever I cop for a farm of my own, I promise you a job. Hmm. Same wages. Yeah, eh? Twice as much. Twice now, still now. Oh, good at sums as well, eh? Perhaps they give me a job at one of these posh milking parlours. One is estate. Oh, that'd be like going from village sport to Olympic Games. <laughs> Man, I think that's what Joe's got in mind at present. Mm, and if they had an event for this, reckon we get a gold. Pity it's not gold you're brushing. Oh, just supposing we found oil on the farm. Ah, well, then we'd retire to the south of France and never look at a cow's tail again. Mm. Wake up, you're dreaming. I'd still be a farmer's wife and muck out for now, says Dolly Skilbeck when interviewed. <laughs> and the band <laughs> plays. Hey, but what if NY Estates made an offer for the farm? I mean, an offer we couldn't turn down. Well, you've answered your own question there, love. Couldn't be turned down. Come to think of it, I don't mind mucking out, even for going rate. <laughs> and Nellie Ratcliffe doesn't mind living in a weather-beaten old cottage. Oh, no, that's a bit different. The way Grandad's described this flat that the council's offered her, well, she would be improving her standard of living. So would we, if we found oil. Who's not awake now? <laughs> One's a dream, t'other's a reality. Mm. We'll have to see how Grandad goes on. He reckon he can talk her out of it or into it. Yeah, well, he can talk the hind legs off a donkey when he's a mind. Oh, oh, I picked up a splinter. I'm afraid you're a bit late for breakfast, Vicar. Oh, thanks all the same, Ellie. Oh, I can see you didn't come for breakfast. There's obviously something on your mind. Oh, there was. But not now. I've reached a decision about Nellie Ratcliffe. We've all been reaching decisions. But they never seem to come to out. Oh, I think this one will. I've decided to ask her to come to the vicarage as my housekeeper. I need one. I'll not deny it. I brought it up the other day and I was wrong. To no, 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 Annie. She needs a home. And the church is more or less alive. We agreed upon that, you and I. So? All in the garden's lovely. Except for one thing. Well, what's that? You. You don't really want her there. If, if a clergyman can't practice what he pre... I'll call on her this morning. She's with Dad at the moment, looking at this posh flat in Totten. But don't you think... I've made up my mind, Annie. Say so. All mud comes. That's right. If you turn water on at mains, you can have a bath. That's if you don't mind cold water. Oh, There's hot water, you silly hapers. Where are you from? In the immersion heater in airing cupboard, of course. Oh, I know. There's no back boiler because there's no fireplace. Ah, it's all electric, love. Hmm? Now, you know what the man says. Think electric. I'm doing just that. Who pays bill? And just think, you'll have none of that bother with cleaning up the ashes from the hearth. None of that bother of lighting a fire in summer. Eh? You've got wool in your ears. I said, who pays Bill? Well, they'll give you supplementary assistance or something like that. Like they'll help me pay me rent. Aye. That's charity, that is. Oh, oh, come off it. You've worked all your life. You're entitled to it. Would you take it? Well, well, it's bright, isn't it? Then I've misjudged you, Sam, all these years. Listen, Nelly. We're neither of us getting any younger. Is that summit I didn't know? Every year, we get just that little bit slower. We pick up a few extra aches and pains. How's Annie this morning and rest of family? You see, it's all very well for me. I'm lucky. I've got a family and a roof up my head. And if it's charity, well, it comes from kith and kin. Aye, well, fella who'd be giving me me dole wouldn't be kith and kin. Uh -huh. Well, would you prefer old folks home? I'd choke myself in cut first. Oh, well, you're going the right way about it, aren't you? I mean, if the day ever comes when you can't move around that cottage of yours, they're just going to come with the ambulance and cart you off, or else they're going to find you sitting in front of an empty grate because you haven't got the strength to put the coal on. Reckon I'd live forever in this place, do you? Longer. You'd always have warmth with central heating, shops round the corner. I'm beholden to you for showing me round. Oh, I see. The answer's no, is it? Of course it's no. What did you think? Oh, I think the same as you, lass. 
Oh, it's too far for me to come for a cup of tea and a scone when I'm feeling like it. Oh, if only there were a flat in Beckingdale, eh? Tell Annie I'll have kettle on this afternoon. I'll convey that message. I knew you'd support me, Sam. No, it is. Well, if you've decided to stay in Cottage Love, I'll support you. Morning, Mrs. Sugden. Hello. I've just driven your father and Mrs. Radcliffe back from Houghton. No need to ask what she thinks of the flat. Now do it. Can't say I'm sorry. Can't say I'm glad. That's how we all feel, lasses. No, nah, she never lasted. Not in that flat. Next stop, geriatric ward. I've seen too much of it. If only they'd let folk be, eh? We can't just do nothing. That lass is as much part of countryside as owls that hoot in the treetops. Yeah. She doesn't like cold days like today, but they keep her alive. Sitting in front of central heating would melt. Folk mean well, wrapping them up in cotton wool and mollycoddling. Doesn't always work, though. Whose side are you on? Well, on the side of people that need me. I'm a social worker because I want to do something for folk. At least I hope I can. The system's always there, though. You can only push it so far. What's the next move on Bartonelli? Probably time for a bit of wait and see, nothing else. Vicar says he's going to offer a job as housekeeper. Well, that's the first bit of good news I've heard all week. Ain't enough of gods, that is. Personally, I don't think it's the right thing. Not for either of them. Three pounds. First dividend, Amos. Oh, it's for not in courier. Expenses, re Mrs. Ratcliffe. Oh, well, that's better than a smack in the eye. But I'm not doing now. Doors open! <clears throat> think what it might have been if you had done some of eh? Could run into hundreds. Oh, now then, Annie. Morning, Annie. Coffee smells good. Oh, would you like a cup? There's still <coughs> some in the pot. Nice of you to offer. Check from Korea for expenses. Oh. <laughs> Tell him you want ten times that. That Nelly drinks champagne out of a bucket. Buy of a mercenary mind, Mr. Wilkes. Why don't you sit a bit far, Annie? I'll get you that cup. Ah, oh, good idea. Sit you down. Know, shall I take your coat? Oh, it's all right, thanks. Huh. Is Joe all right? I have the course and give him a break. That's what we could all do with at times. Going up on the course. <laughs> Wouldn't harm Vicar right now. Not wrong in that direction, is it? Oh, he takes things to heart, so. Well, I reckon it's all part of the job. Why, is he set up? No, no, he's not set up, but I've got eyes. I've stirred it. Thank you, Amos. Uh, decided what to do with your remuneration yet, Amos? It's not funny, Mr. Wilkes. Happen I shouldn't accept it. Hey, what's you making a mountain out of a molehill? If you feel in such a moral dilemma about it, why don't you go and see the vicar? Now, that's a better idea than you know, Mr. Wilkes. There, now. I'll read you what I've written. You don't have to, Vicar. <laughs> Today witnessed Mrs. Nellie Ratcliffe's post office savings book in which she had paid three pounds, being the rent for her cottage. There. Well, that seems fair enough to me, Vicar. That should hold good, that should. I wonder if I could have a, a few words with Nellie. Oh, yes, please, sir. do sit down. I'll tell you what, Sam. Perhaps you could pop into the church. There are a couple of spindles on the altar rail. I prefer Sam to stay. We come in through door together, and I prefer for us to go out through door together. All right, now. Yeah. Come to think of it, I'd be grateful for Sam's support. I always am. Oh, thank you, sir. It's very nice of you to say that. I'll sit here, then. Right. <sighs> Nellie, you're devoted to this church. When my husband gone, there's no else, is there? Almost your life, isn't it? I'll not deny well, sir, do you think I'd better... Stay where you are, Sam. Sam. That'll keep. Nellie, once you're here, I'll be grateful. Nellie, how would you like to become more involved with the church? Oh, I can always spare a bit more time. Just well, no, what, what I'm talking about is not a bit more time. It's full time. Oh, excuse me. Vicarage. Oh, hello, Emma. Yes, of course you can, any time. There's no need to make an appointment. Just check to see if I'm in. Oh, all right. Shall we say 3.30? Good, I'll see you then. I could have just called round. Yes, sir, well, perhaps I'll... Stay I'll... where you are, Sam Pearson, and don't fidget. Nelly, how would you like to become my housekeeper? Housekeeper? That's right. I wouldn't know where to begin. Your cottage is one of the tidiest and cleanest I've ever been in. You can eat off floor. Exactly. 
And that's where you begin. You're quite right, Vicar. She keeps a tidy house. Oh. Shut thee up. When I want thee to open the trap, I'll tell thee not before. And she's a first-class cook. Oh, I'm aware of that. And she's liked by everybody in the village. Yes, indeed she is. Why don't you apply for the job? There's plenty to say. And Nelly, there'd be the telephone. Now, when the Vicar's out, there's nobody there at the end of the line. It's like calling for the church and the church not listening. I couldn't have said it better myself, sir. When folk call, you'd have tea for me for them. Now, you love that, don't you? Come on, Nanny, what about it? Be living in? Oh, yes, living in. And there'd be wages in your purse, think of that, eh? Housekeeper, eh? And you'd be the most respected lady in the village. What? I hope this'll not disappoint you too much, Vicar. But I'll have to refuse your generous offer. Your ways aren't my ways, Vicar. I'm used to being on me own and not at beck and call. So I must say a positive no. But I'm beholden. Well, Mr. Clever Clogs, what's thou got to say to that? <sighs> well, I think you're probably right, lass. How many jars of pickled onions? Uh, five. Right, well, let W.I. have two. Two for W.I. Little walnuts? Uh, four. One for W.I. One for W.I. Hang on, we've only got four. I'll give them one. Three's enough. Oh, I could eat three myself. You know I like pickled walnuts. What's wrong with pickled onions? Yeah, what's wrong with pickled onions? I'd sooner pickled walnuts. One for W.I. You're on my side. I'm on W.I.'s side. There's a fair next week, remember? Well, give me three pickled onions and hang on to walnuts. Dad likes onions. Oh, well, he's not here, is he? What he don't see, he won't grieve. Next, Daddy. Uh, pickled beetroot. Uh, six. One for W.I. One for W.I. What's the game? One out of four pickled walnuts and only one out of six pickled beetroot. I like beetroot. <laughs> God, I'm missing Joe already. It's two against one here. Pickled cabbage? Eight. Give them the lot. I'll tell you what, Matt. If you're that fond of pickled walnuts, you can come to the WI fair and buy them back. Ah, well, I might just do that. Good. It'll swell funds. And eat them in bed. Oh, Oh, Annie, did you remember to press and turn cheeses this morning? When you were with cows. Very sure of yourself with this cheese, aren't you? Of course Confidence we are. the word. Cheese is cheese. Where did you get that idea from? You should know better than that, Matt. Like wine is cheese. Depends on the countryside and the climate. Our cows graze on the north side, where there's ripe minerals in soil. They breathe in good, fresh air, and that's the combination that makes Dale's cheese. Uh, and Joe would have learnt more about dairy and if he'd spent more time in kitchen listening. Hmm. It's needling you, this college business, isn't it? Oh, it's short notice to give more and out else. I'm still shivering from milking. Ah, cold goes right through you this time of year. Hmm. I bet that college has got central eating. Seems to me Joe's getting too many ideas off that estate. I just wonder where it'll all lead to that sort of... How many, Sam? Three, please, I must. Is that all? I'm going to have three every time I come in. Why not a book? Because I've got a sister. Mm -hmm. Choppers? Well, that's just for that one. Oh. I'll have number 15 pink. Number 15 pink. I gather uh, Amos is coming up to see you. He's got now to do with him, Vicar. Uh, my lips are sealed, Amos. I don't suppose Mr Wilkes has ever heard of immunity at church. You made the call in front of me. That were no reason to surmise. Amos, I'll have number 22 in that book. You're messing up system, Sam. Your system, perhaps, not mine. The 22 orange. Uh, you'll want the yellow book next day, Moss. Henry, it's good manners to wait to be asked. Oh, I stand corrected, Sam. Ah. But yellow's the only colour left. Oh. oh. Customer has freedom of choice. Uh, any news of Nellie Ratcliffe, then? Uh, well, she's turned down the flat. But I promised to stand by her, Henry, and I will. Though for the life of me, I can't. I don't know. Oh, I'll have number 10 in... Uh, uh, yellow, please, Amos. I hope she can stand the strain. Mm. I don't think she understands what she's let herself in for. Number ten, yellow. I mean, you. the next set could be a court order. Mm. But it'll be a long time before they get anywhere with that. She'll stand up to them. In the short run, maybe. After a while, I doubt it. Oh, it's uh, pressure's on her that worry me. I'll have a book, Amos. Oh, thank you. Vicar. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's not fair, Vicar. 
Why not? Oh, no, I might want one from there next time. Well, that could be just too bad, won't it, sir? Henry, my system is to win all three prizes. I can't do that unless I spread me chances. That could be too bad. The pounds, vicar getting yeah. a book, that rules out my freedom of choice. Well, that's exactly what this new company is doing in the village. Uh, and there's uh, not we can do about it. Uh, I wish there was. I'm professionally trained to fight the devil. Whenever he comes to Beckendale, I give him a good run for his money, I think. But with this company of anonymous people, I'm lost. Could be as we don't understand their system, Vicar. Any more than we understand Sam's. <laughs> Before you go. No, thanks. I'll be supping plenty of Nellie's. You've got enough for empty kettle. <laughs> oh, I'll be up for salt. As soon as Grandad's found that bit of wood he wants from shed. All right. Oh, I thought I'd go over to the estate. See this new husband Joe's been raving about. It's a bit too faced that hobnobbing with fella that's pushing Nellie into the street. Well, this has got nothing to do with Nellie. There's no harm in picking up a few tips for now. Happen you don't know that, Nellie. Perhaps you could mention it. Well, I suppose. Got a few hints if the subject crops up. Oh, could you collect me from pub? Matt's dropping me there. I thought I'd go and say hello to him. Why not? Ta-da. ta Bye-bye. ta -da. I'd not say no to a cup of tea. Well, you know where kettle is and there's water in tap. Well, you just offered Ma. I'm courtesy that and you should say no. I am drying pots for you, love. Oh, well, that's a deal, isn't it? You help me and I help you for milking and that. All right, reach this kettle then. Oh, don't worry, I'll do it. Soon as pots are finished. Oh, it's been all are you? Just letting you know I'll not be taken for granted. Oh, darling, I'll never do that. Not yet. But in case you do. I'm trying to get round me or something. If a peck on cheek will get round you, I've got unlimited powers. Right, welcome, Mrs. Nelly. You can't beat a cup of tea, can you? Coffee's for posh folk. I never trust folk that drink coffee, especially in afternoons. Tea's honest, tea is. About the flat. You don't blame me, do you? Of course not. Welfare fella didn't blame me either. Nice fella, welfare man. I kept saying welfare and he kept saying, No, Mrs. Radcliffe, social services. What's the difference, I said. Haven't a clue, he said. <laughs> I thought thy mother's raised an honest man, and I gave him a couple of eggs to take home. What are we going to do with you, Nelly? Do now, Danny. Just be my friend. You're fond of this house, aren't you? It's fond of me, you know. But if it was struck by lightning, you'd have to leave it, go to a council flat. Happen I would. But then that'd be act of God. It'd mean he had his reasons. It's not fair, Annie. What isn't love? God, giving me a conscience. There's not to have a conscience about. Me sitting here being awkward. I'm an awkward old woman. Oh, not awkward. Well, obstinate then. There's this fella, with his wife and children waiting to move in, and me stopping him. He's not homeless, Nelly. He's chosen to leave his present home and come up here for a job. He's got the choice. So have I got choice. Happen I might consider council flat, but there's reasons why I can't. Good reasons. And not that it's in Hutton. What other reasons? Don't you know? I thought it might have occurred. Well, sup your tea while it's hot, and then I'll show you. Hey, must be in down at church. I'm brew lad. <laughs> Cup of tea in here. It's like old times. Go on, Dolly. Come up with me to estate. You know it, way. It's not that. That new fella up there, we reckon he don't know that Nelly's being chucked out for his benefit. But it's time he did know. And what do I do? After I've shaken hands with him, I say, uh, do you know you're the fella helping to get an old woman kicked out of her house, what she's lived in most of her life? Now, will you show me around your milking parlour? More likely, show me his fist. <laughs> Of course, you don't mind him showing me his fist. Ah, you'd me to contend with if he did that. Hmm. I suppose I should be flattered. That's right. 
Besides, he wouldn't threaten a woman, would he? Ah, you sure of that? That's why he made idle boast. Well, a woman wouldn't be inside. More tactful, like, eh? That's right. Oh, there's an admission from Perry. Go on, then. Come up with me, help me break the news. I should have spoken up early, but I didn't want to break up a touching little domestic scene. <laughs> Would be a wasted journey. How's that? That young Ashcroft fellow dropped in for a pint. Said he were on his way south to collect some cattle company had bought. Be a couple of days, he reckoned. Oh. Well, that knocks that on head then, doesn't it? What country woman don't keep a few hens? None as I know. And hasn't Penny dropped yet? Oh, Nelly, I must be dense. Of course. No livestock on council properties. Only living things have got these. They need me and I need them. Sydney'd have to be destroyed. Hens would have to go to market. I'll break your heart, that would. Oh, I'm sorry, love. These hens are better than yours, Annie Sugden. Some of their eggs are double yokers. I'd made up my mind this morning, Vicar, then what you said at dinner time clinch matters. Well, what did I say? About devil in Beckendale. Oh, <laughs> that was just a figure of speech. But you believe in devil, don't you? Yes, I have reluctantly to accept the fact that there is evil in the world. Oh, same difference. I thought you were happy at the Collier. I am. As long as it don't harm folk, and when they print stuff what I wrote, I know it fills a space what might otherwise have been used for stuff that might hurt sensitive minds. What an admirable philosophy. Oh, I mean that, Amos. Mm, any road, I'd like you to have that money to go towards your Christmas fund. Thank you. I'll have added a bit more. Happen it'll help to make somebody happy. Yes, indeed it will. Unfortunately, it can't help everybody. You ask me, you don't know the truth about Nelly. You think she's leaving of her own accord. Well, you know what it is, don't you? He's naturally desperate to bring his wife and kiddie back to where they came from. And the new owners are desperate to keep hold of a good top herdsman. Leaving poor Nelly. The way of the world, I suppose. Ah, uh, Nelly's in the way, so the world rolls over her. Young ones don't think. Got their eyes too much on the future to think of the past. Yes. Uh, and what about Ashcroft's wife? Supposing she becomes a widow. Suppose they're going to chuck her out when the time comes. Young ones don't think, like I said. Not until it's pointed out to them. What's the matter, Dolly? Oh, it's a bit poorly, that's all. That's all? I'm all right, honest. Don't fuss, Matt. It's a call starting, not much. I'll get hot water bottle ready. And a cup of tea with Henry and came over all faint. Aye, but it's past that. Well, come to the fire, lads. Come on. It's that early morning milking, Matt. It's not fit for man or beast these last two Straight days. Straight to bed, Matt. Right, lads. Upstairs. After milking? Only milking you're going to see. You'll be hotter in a glass. Oh, all right, then. Come on. We will rejoin Sky Soap tomorrow at 11 when we take the high road to Glendower. But for now, we travel back in time with the History Channel.